Christians all over the world. There was this kid who was who was terrified. He was being led away with his grandfather. He looked at his grandfather and said, where are we going? His grandfather looked at him and said, we're going home. Some of the last words said by a guy by the name of St. Mark, Wittenberg Project. Yo, so we all we all have trials and tribulations, you dig? And now we only hear about ones from the West. You know what I'm saying? But it's trials everywhere. We all lean on and depend on Christ. And sometimes people are trials are a little more heavier than other things like, well, check it out. There was this famous doctor, right? Not famous, but he was well known in his community. Helping the poor, good guy, faithful, a faithful guy, you know? He got sick with a stomach illness. Uh, this is like the 1800s. He got sick, you know, but being a doctor, you know, you got the hookup. The hookup. So he treated himself. Treated himself with um, a common painkiller, opium. You know? Well respected guy in the community. Lo and behold, after the treatments he was giving himself and he was able to heal, he got addicted to it. Got addicted to it. I mean, he knew, he knew, you know what I'm saying, that this was a problem. Took it to the church. Took it to the church, confessed, was really depending, praying about it, leaning on Christ. But this thorn on his side, he couldn't get rid of. And he battled this for years, for years, steadily coming to church, steadily depending on Christ. Now, back in these days, they didn't view drug addiction as a disease or things like that, or view it like in the light that we see it today. So, eventually, his confessor, the guy who's confessing to the church, pretty much, was like, "Man, you ain't trying to, you ain't trying to quit, man. Yo, you can't take communion. You know. Now, we all know usually that that's like an invitation to leave the church. Someone denies you communion, and you're being disciplined here." We in society aren't big on discipline. We'll find someone else who agrees with us or who we don't have to tell what happened and move on about our business. He continued going to this church for 30 years, being denied communion because he just couldn't kick the habit. He couldn't kick the habit, you know? And it, it, it really drove him to despair. Like, he tried, you know? It was to the point where he, 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 he had the notion that the only way that he was going to get to heaven is if he died as a martyr. That's cold when well, you think that you know you have messed up so much and there's no room for you at the foot of the cross that you have to die for your faith to show that no, I, I truly do believe in Christ and his his completed works. Although I can't beat this struggle or trial that I'm facing, I still bank all my assurance at the foot of the cross at Golgotha. One day, some rebels came into town. And unluckily, gathered him and his family up, took them away. And pretty much, I mean, you can deny Christ, you have a shot at living, or you can stand fast and be steadfast and know your outcome. Him and his family were tortured and beaten. Before the end, he said, I want to be the last one because I want no one in my family to die alone and this I mean that's cold like that's big you know and just to show that his faith was all pointed to Christ in this matter when they were being drugged away his grandson looked scared and looked at him like grandpa where are we going looked at his son and told him straight we're going home we're going home it's a beautiful, tragic story. This guy's recognized as a saint. Uh, he died in the early 1900s. Saint Mark. I can't pronounce his last name. In Asia. We don't talk about the Asia church that much. We don't talk about the beautiful saints in East Asia that... Had the gospel pretty soon. You had people like uh, Apostle Andrew and them going east and sharing the good news and sharing the gospel over there. 
we always like to just think of, oh, the Sistine Chapel, you know, oh, Europe, Europe, Europe. It's a lot of stuff in the world, man. And this is a beautiful story about a guy who struggled with addiction but kept the faith. Kept the faith. And, I mean, this story is something that really can help people who are struggling to know that God's still there for you, man. Straight up. God's still there for you. Sure, you might not overcome your addiction, your attraction, other things of that nature. You fight it. You fight it to the end. You know, you you try to obey God's statutes, and though we all fail, our faith is in something greater. And he's a perfect example of that. He didn't just give up on the faith, stop going to church when he was denied communion. He didn't shun the pastor who did that and turn his family, become a stumbling block for his family in the faith, saying, nah, these Christians are judgmental, this and that. No, he kept his eyes focused on God. Kept his eyes focused on God. It's a beautiful story. Um, from somebody who, I mean, I know people who are addicted to drugs. I know how they're looked at. I know how they're viewed, you know. But they're, a lot of them, I won't say well, a lot. A lot of I know have faith in Christ. And they truly wish that they could break this habit. And they try their hardest. Some are successful. Some not so much, you know. But St. Mark's a beautiful example of, of how one can be steadfast in the faith and go down in history for not denying our Lord and Savior. It's a lot of people who live that great life who denied Christ when push came to shove. Let's keep it 100. The Apostle Peter denied him three times. When a little girl said, yo, don't you roll with, don't you roll with him over there on the cross? No, nah, I don't know, old boy. Someone else, no, nah, I don't know, old boy. The rooster crows. Jesus' prophecy comes true. You know, this is someone who actually walked with Jesus. You know, matter of fact, Pete, Apostle Peter walked on water. You know what I'm saying? Like, and he denied, he denied Christ when his life was on the line. Now, I don't want to bash Peter because later on, yo, he did get crucified upside down for his faith. And he did not deny Christ. But this moment I'm talking about, he did. Anyhow, Winterberg Project, y'all have a blessed day.